What are atoms? How do they look like? Let's take a look into what we have learned about them and how we think of them. The history of the atom. Um, you know, at the beginning of these videos, I always do my spiel of this is not what an atom looks like and then I show something. But um, that's getting increasingly difficult now that we're entering quantum physics for real. Anyway, I couldn't bring a cloud, so I brought a cotton ball. This is not what an atom looks like, but it kind of works as, as a picture of what we know about atoms today. Let's try to clear it up. By the mid-1920s, it had become apparent that there was a big disconnect between what was understood about physics at that time and uh, the observed behavior of atoms. Now there had been some partial successes like uh, Bohr's model of the atom, but there were many more results that um, were unexplained and even seemingly unexplainable. In 1925, young Werner Heisenberg was the first to preach the door into atomic physics. His approach had been to discard the entire notion of orbiting electrons and trying to describe their trajectories and the forces holding them in orbit. Rather, he decided to only use what could be directly observed. In the case of atoms, the light emitted by atoms, its frequencies and intensities. Starting from scratch, he came up with a scheme of multiplying tables of data, which was subsequently refined into matrix mechanics, the first formulation of quantum mechanics. It was highly abstract though and not immediately successful. And we don't have to get into all the details here. Um, as far as our video goes, there is a simple message. The reason why we cannot describe atoms in our well-established pictures and methods is because they follow a completely different set of rules. Put succinctly, the reason why it's so difficult to grasp atoms is because they aren't even objects, um, they aren't things in the usual sense. Erwin Schrödinger also tried to decipher the strange behavior of atoms, but he was coming at it from a different perspective. Just a few years earlier, French physicist Louis de Broglie had speculated that matter, that um, particles, can also exhibit some wave properties. There is a frequency associated with energy and a wavelength associated with momentum. Now the thing with waves is, they can always be described by a wave equation which describes what any part of the wave is doing at any given time. For example, this is the wave equation for a one-dimensional transversal wave. Now, you don't have to understand what all the symbols mean, just that this equation exists and fully describes anything the wave does. So Schrödinger tried to answer the question, if particles can in fact behave like waves, what is the wave equation for that? After a number of failures and wrong tracks, he actually achieved this and came up with what is still called the Schrödinger equation. A wave equation describing matter waves. And most physicists were elated by this. No more of this weird quantum jumping and randomness and, and probabilities. Finally back to real physics. Finally a wave equation and a wave function that uh, evolves regularly and in a well-behaved way. There were still a lot of open questions, but surely those could be settled over time. Schrödinger could correctly calculate the hydrogen spectrum and got those weirdly beautiful orbitals as solutions. He could also show that his wave mechanics, described by his equation, and Heisenberg's matrix mechanics were mathematically equivalent and would always give the same answer to problems. For a short period of time, it looked as if all the quantum silliness could actually be rolled back and be replaced with a nice continuous wave. Until people started to ask, a wave of what exactly? Schrödinger 
Schrödinger initially figured that this wave function was a description of the electron's mass density or charge density, but um, the problem with this was that it was simply never observed. Electrons were never a smeared out wave. You would only ever get particle-like electrons whenever you did a measurement. So how do you square this with the wave picture and the orbitals? Initially he wasn't too fussed about it and figured it would become clearer given some time. Unfortunately for him, this did not happen. Max Born came up with a solution that worked, but it did introduce uh, all the quantum jumping and randomness that Schrödinger so despised into his beloved wave mechanics. Born's proposal was that the wave function was the probability amplitude for where the electron would be found in a measurement, and the norm squared of the wave function was the probability. This meant that the orbital showed the possible locations where you could find the electrons with higher and lower probabilities, but you could not exactly calculate where you would find it. To elaborate on this and to specify what the electron cloud picture even means, let's look at this toy model of an atom. The nucleus is in the middle, here it basically just acts as a fixed point of reference. Whenever you would measure the electron, you would find it in a seemingly random location. It would make no sense at all to speak about orbiting electrons or even about electrons following a trajectory. If you repeat this measurement a lot of times and combine them all into a single picture, you get the orbitals. This is also the electron cloud that is often talked about in this context. You see, it's not really a cloud because there is only ever a small number of actual electrons. But if you could measure these electrons several times and then combine those measurements, this is what you'd get. Some kind of probability cloud, for lack of a better term. We will certainly be talking about the Born rule in one or more future videos, but for the time being, this is our best current picture of what an atom looks like. What an atom is. And with that, this series draws to a close. Um, while there have been some refinements and additions in the decades since, in essence our current atomic model is still the same as the one formulated by Heisenberg and Schrödinger back then. There are potentially some more areas to go into, mostly about the nucleus and quarks, but I'm not yet sure if this should be done as a continuation of the History of the Atom series. So, for the time being, I hereby declare the series as concluded and leave you with the cloud picture of the atom. This is what an atom looks like. Mm -hmm.